Hey everyone, I'm Lo Wheeler, Kinder Professionals brand ambassador, and I'm super excited to demystify the difference between two foil placements, mohawk versus fan. Let's get started. The three tips I wanna share with you today is knowing the difference between mohawk and a fan pattern and when to use them for your clients. We're gonna discover which placement to use for clients that want a lot of contrast, then which placement is gonna be best for dimension, and then also what placement are you gonna use dependent on how your client parts their hair. Our first technique is gonna be a mohawk section, and just for consistency, both of my doll heads are gonna have the same block section on their crown, so we can really do a side-by-side -side of the results for you. So a mohawk section in the most simplest description is foils that go horizontally back in a grid-like section. This is really a traditional approach to foiling. I'm gonna let down this section and then start working from the front to the back. And we know when we do that, the front will be a little bit lighter. So you have to make the determination if your client's hair can handle that in the front. So mohawk section is super traditional. If you've ever been into a salon or seen anyone foiling hair, you're gonna come across this mohawk sectioning placement. And basically what you're going to look for in an end result is a high level of dimension. We're taking a medium weave to just illustrate this, and we'll understand that when you keep going and following a grid-like pattern, you're gonna get a grid-like result. This looks like a high level of dimension in the finish. So I'm going to section by section do a medium weave, bringing my blue powder lightener consistently through my foil. I've mixed it two to one. I like foiling with a little bit of a looser texture um, with my lightener because I want it to glide through the hair. I'm not gonna totally pull it through the ends because they're already pretty light as you can see, but I do want you to see the difference in the two placements. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through the mid shaft as well. One mistake I used to make when I was in beauty school is not dropping in a section of hair in between each foil. And it would just be like so funny because I would pull all the foils out and literally there'd be no dimension left in between because I was picking up everything in the foil and it was just like, I didn't know what I was doing wrong at the time, but that piece of hair, that section of hair in between the foils is going to change the outcome and overall look of the dimension you're creating. There is a big difference in the two words, dimension and contrast. I've learned that dimension is a great way of illustrating the amount of shades and inflections in the hair, whereas contrast is a difference of the levels between two opposite tones. As I work through this mohawk section, I am committed to keeping my pattern because if I start to veer off and start to work off of a diagonal and change up all of my foil positionings, it's gonna change the end result. This is a super classic approach and so I'm locking my technique and pattern basically into this grid-like consistency where it's gonna be super even as I follow through with completing this section. And what this is going to do as an end result is it's just gonna have such a bold dimensional effect and it's really ideal for clients that can't commit to a hair part and want to see tons of inflections in their hair. So you know, those clients that are blondeaholics, those clients that, you know, flip their hair around. 
So what happens when our client has this placement and they decide to flip their hair around? Because we're creating such a systemized uh, grid-like pattern, it doesn't matter where they flip their hair. There's gonna be a presence of color every, in every um, subsection. It's very, very thorough. It's a great way to make a very um, picky client <laughs> happy. If they want to flip their hair around, they're always going to see that presence of dimension, which is a really good thing to know when you're going through a consultation. In these sections that there's a little bit more depth in, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the color, the lightener throughout the whole section. One tip I like to implement when I'm foiling is starting to apply my product a little further away from the root area and just working the product up slightly. This just helps me to avoid unnecessary like sloppiness and bleeding because you know how lightener swells in the processing time so we don't want a lot of product right at the end of the foil towards the root we want a good amount of product but not a uh, too much we don't want it to swell change move and create issues and bleed marks very very picky with that i never get bleed marks and i'm so happy to share this tip with you it's like so stressful to rent somebody out and then see a bunch of bleed marks everywhere then you have to like overshadow and overcompensate and you're like all stressing out but it's really easy to avoid that by just being a little bit cleaner and more um, deliberate with how you initially put the lightener onto your foil one thing I will say is if you are using a mohawk foiling technique just like this, you know, it's really is a challenge to just leave it at this placement. You're going to have a drop off if you don't continue your placement in a similar fashion down the other quadrants of the hair. So really you're looking to do like a pretty substantial foiling job. So this is more geared towards those full foil clients and you want to make sure that you charge according to that labor and also that amount of coverage and appointment time as well. There's a little business strategy for you. I'm excited to show you the fan technique because there is some really good points of difference that will contrast what we're doing at this point. So this is like such a traditional way to approach hair and just get a high impact. So you'll see a lot of different educators putting their own spin and subsectioning onto this classic approach and doing like diagonals in a mohawk section leading back and you know doing little specific customizations that you'll see get slightly different results. My challenge for you would be to try this technique as it is, super classic, notice your results and measure them, and then make your own creative customizations. Okay, now moving on to our fan type of pattern. Basically, I'm gonna stick within temple to temple, just like the mohawk section, and we're gonna do similar coverage of circumference area. Um, however, I'm going to work off of a middle part. You can work off of any type of part that your client is you know, naturally parting their hair at, but it's just gonna give a little variation in effect. 
So I'm gonna work off of a middle part. And the fan shape pattern is going to literally be going this way instead of horizontally and going straight back. And really, I love this because what it accomplishes is it has like a little bit more of an organic aesthetic because you're actually looking at the placement versus just a bunch of grid-like pieces. So you have the opportunity to make more contrast in the hair versus dimension. So I'm gonna start by laying the first foil in this way. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this immediate next section and I'm gonna pull it towards me and do a really nice moderate weave. And piggy that right back onto my section. And we're gonna do this same pattern for a good couple foils deep. And then I'm gonna show you a main difference between your options with a fan placement and a mohawk placement. But until then, I am just going to work my product towards the scalp, just like before. Again, this is gonna give us an opportunity to have different spacing between our sections. And when you have different amounts of space between the sections, you're able to control not only the dimension, you're able to control the amount of contrast you're seeing in the hair. So with a heavy, systematic weaving placement, you're gonna see just total dimension. But with this, we're gonna start to be able to work off diagonals, we're gonna play with spacing the foils apart, and that's ultimately going to give us control over the contrast we're creating. Working on a fan pattern is also good for clients that like to flip their hair. You just have to be a little bit more strategic with where you're placing your initial foils and how heavy you choose to place them back to back. But let's just say, for example, we're using this tutorial to work off a middle part. But if my client worked off a middle part and sometimes flipped to a side, you could do a heavy concentration of foils on each recession, which would be the side part area. So you're definitely not limited to just a middle part or a heavy placement in a chosen part just because you choose to do that. You could easily make this versatile for people that flip their hair by how you um, continue to choose your placement. As you can see with just so few foils, we're working with the width of the foil to save us time in application. There's literally, what is it, six foils here and it already goes through the width of her entire crown area. So how I'm going to build in more efficiency and dimension and contrast with this is I'm gonna start to take diagonal foil placements as I work down to her temple. So instead of doing a million foils, I'm really going to cut out pie sections, which is, like I mentioned before, slightly more hair in between than what I previously sectioned out. I'm gonna work through the bias of her head. I'm still creating the same pattern of weave and thickness of weave. So let's just say 
revisiting the topic of like she parts her hair in the middle and on the side. We're now getting in the area of like where a side part would naturally live. So if I wanted her to have a side part there as well as a center part, I would just double back to back foils in the areas where she would theoretically like to part her hair. So you can see the gap and distance between these main six foils and the seventh. And now I'm going to do another pie shape subsection and I'm gonna connect it horizontally to the width of these initial ones. And then I'm gonna repeat this on the other side. I'm always going to make sure that this point at the temple is closest to the others. This is gonna give me a slight money piece effect, which is always a good thing because it's super in style. So that's what we're gonna do. And now our final subsection. Again, we're gonna come down at a diagonal it's gonna be a little deeper in the crown area. And this extra space in between these foils, as we remember, is just gonna cause a little bit more contrast, which is what we're shooting for. We know we all have those clients that love a good contrast. Here's our two different foil placements. And as you can see, there's a couple little differences between them. So the fan shape placement is really great because I was able to create a little bit more separation between the subsections. That's gonna result in so much more dimension. So here's tip number one. If you want your client to see a lot of dimension and contrast, you would easily opt into a fan shape pattern. Tip number two, we can see that there's so much more placement in this mohawk section, so that's gonna cause an extreme amount of dimension. So tip number two is if you want a client that's looking for a high amount of facets in the hair and inflections in the hair, AKA dimension, you're gonna opt more into a mohawk pattern. For flipping the hair, we've learned that you can flip the hair with both of these different patterns, but you're gonna have to make a conscious effort to keep your placement in mind when you do a fan with a client that's gonna flip. And then also, if you have a mohawk section that you're working through to cause a lot of dimension for your client's hair, they can part it zigzag to the left, to the right, and you're gonna have color placement in all aspects of the hair. So the mohawk placement gives the most coverage. And if you have a client that likes to part their hair some of the time, but they don't flip their hair in numerous different directions, the fan is really minimalist and super effective for hair flippers as well. Our final tip in this tutorial that I want you to take away from this is that both techniques are effective. They both offer dimension and some contrast. One is just higher contrast and one is just higher dimension. This pattern, I was able to count the foils and I was able to achieve the same surface space with a good three less foils. So if you're looking to save time, this might be a better option, but if you're looking for like really, really thorough placement, this is the option that you will wanna choose. I did take the opportunity to do the same shadow root on both of them so they would just look finished and as you would actually finish your clientele as well and see the final results. So you're looking at a 8NA shadow root, which is like super nice and neutral, so the difference between the fan and the traditional mohawk is exactly what you're looking at. With the fan, you get a little bit more dimension because this hair, when it splits, you can see some of that interior depth that occurs when we space out the foils on a dimensional 
diagonal parting. So that's the result that you're looking to achieve. And with the Mohawk, it's very grid-like. So you're gonna see a little bit more diffusion, a little bit more dimension versus contrast. So here are the two final results. And this will vary on client to client. Some clients will lift a little bit more. Some will have finer hair in which you can make little tweaks to the spacing between your sectioning. But I'm really excited to show you the different ways that you can customize your foiling services based on your client's preferences. My name is Lil Wheeler and I'll see you next time.